It's the beginning of August, the dog days of summer, if you will, in my neck of the woods. I have made bunches of lunches. I have utilized my crock pot to make meals. I have made some easy summer meals, and I have even come up with meals that require very little, if any, cooking and can be served chilled. And I am here to tell you that I have hit a wall. I am tired of cooking. And if you are too, or you ever find yourself in that position, then this video is for you. I know it may come as a surprise and it certainly is sort of an occupational hazard for somebody who has a channel devoted to what's going on in my kitchen. But occasionally I just get tired of cooking. Sometimes it's that I'm just tired of the same stuff that I've been making, but I also am overwhelmed or overstimulated by trying to figure out something new to make. And sometimes it's that I feel very limited because it's so hot right now. I don't want to fire up my stove. I don't want to fire up my oven and really like super hot comfort food type meals. Still not really on the menu for us right now, but I live in a household full of people that demand three square meals a day. And that includes me, if I'm being honest. So I'm going to share with you what I did this week and hopefully give you some ideas and some inspiration if you ever find yourself in the same spot that I am in right now. Here in my crock pot, I have a magic little gem of a recipe that is so versatile and I'm going to cook this now and I'm actually going to use it three different ways for three different meals for my family this week. Yay. So I'm also using a crock pot liner. Yes, it's all about shortcuts. I'm tired of cooking. So I did pick up some crock pot liners today. This is not just a regular plastic bag. I sometimes get comments about that. People that are shocked that there's a plastic bag in my crock pot, but these are liners that are made specifically for them and it makes cleanup really easy. So in here I have about four pounds of chicken breast and then a bottle of Italian style dressing. And I would have used the Olive Garden dressing, but it's so expensive at my Walmart and I'm really surprised that Walmart doesn't have a dupe of this Olive Garden Italian dressing in their house brand. I know Aldi does. So I just used a wishbone brand of dressing that was similar. It was an Italian style dressing. I put the whole bottle in here and then I topped that with one brick of cream cheese. So now I'm going to pop the lid on this and cook it and it needs to cook on low for seven to eight hours or high for three to four hours, basically until the chicken is done and ready to shred up. Okay, my chicken is done. So I am actually just going to shred it all up and then stir everything together. I'm gonna to turn the crock pot completely off and put the lid back on until we are ready to eat this. I almost forgot. I'm also going to stir in about a cup or so of shredded cheese. I'm gonna use this provolone and mozzarella blend. Yes, I actually bought pre-shredded cheese for this week. <laughs> that is how tired I am. I hardly ever do that. I made up some rice to have with our Italian chicken tonight, but you can have this with pasta, you can have it over a baked potato, you can have it with zoodles or with cauliflower rice, and then you will see some of the other ways that I'm gonna use it throughout the week. And to go along with this, I just have really easy side salad, easy dinner, yummy. Okay, so in this container, I have about two thirds of the chicken that was left in the crock pot after we ate tonight's dinner. And then in this container, I have the rest of the leftover chicken, so about one third of what was left, plus all of the leftover rice. So this is the chicken and some rice mixed in, and then this one is just the chicken, and I'm gonna use these to make two more meals for us this week. Another resource I like to utilize whenever I have hit a wall with preparing meals is a meal kit service like Green Chef, who is sponsoring today's video. Green Chef is a CCOF certified organic company with options for a variety of lifestyles. My husband and I have been utilizing Green Chef for over a year and a half now, and we've actually had the opportunity to try lots of their meal kits. Green Chef's keto and paleo options give you the premium proteins and vital veggies you need to conquer your day, while their vegan and vegetarian recipes are full of plant-based proteins and wholesome sides. They also offer options for a Mediterranean diet, for a gluten-free diet, and they have a line of meals called Fast and Fit, which come together in a very short prep 
time. One of the reasons I really like to use Green Chef whenever I'm in a bit of a food rut is because number one, they have a variety of changing recipes and so it's a way for me to try something new. In addition to that, everything comes ready to put a meal together. So it's pre-portioned, pre-measured, mostly prepped and ready to put together following the recipe card that they send for each meal kit that's in my box. So Green Chef makes cooking a little bit more enjoyable and I can spend less time stressing about meal planning and what I'm going to eat and actually more time enjoying cooking and preparing really delicious chef curated recipes. My husband and I really enjoy utilizing Green Chef as a way for us to try something different. The kinds of meals that I might not normally think of to fix or that require specialty ingredients that I don't want to purchase a whole lot of and then have hanging out in my kitchen. There has always been something new and exciting in our Green chef boxes and my husband and I have really enjoyed getting to try some different kinds of recipes than we would normally choose and be able to experience some different flavors and maybe even different kinds of cuisine without having to buy a whole bunch of special ingredients that would then you know live in our kitchen and take up space in our pantry. Right now you can get $135 off across your first five boxes plus free shipping on your first box whenever you visit greenchef.com and use my promo code Mindy130. That's $135 off across your first five boxes plus free shipping on the first one when you visit the link in the description box below or go to greenchef.com and use code MINDY135. So thank you again to Green Chef for being a longtime supporter of my channel and don't forget to visit that link in the description box below or go to greenchef.com and use the code MINDY135. It's going to give you $135 off across your first five boxes plus free shipping on the first one. Tonight, I am going to use some of the leftover Italian chicken to make a version of lazy lasagna. And if you have not heard of lazy lasagna, it's where you use frozen raviolis and you layer them with a sauce and with a cheese, and that's how you create a lasagna. You just put it in a casserole dish and then you can pop it in the oven and you've got yourself a really easy lasagna. Some people like to add proteins to it, like meatballs or sausage or ground beef. I am, like I said, going to use some of the chicken mixture from last night and I'm also going to make this in my crock pot. I actually have a casserole shaped crock pot that is perfect for this particular kind of recipe, but you can make this in just a standard crock pot. In fact, I will leave a link in the description box to my friend Carrie's website, eatingonadime.com, because she has a great blog post about this particular recipe that she uses all the time to feed her family of 10. For my version of this recipe, I'm using my leftover Italian chicken from last night, one standard bag of frozen raviolis. I think it's like a 20, maybe a 24 ounce bag of frozen cheese raviolis. I am using some shredded mozzarella and provolone, and I'm actually going to use crushed tomatoes as the sauce, and I'm using the equivalent of about two cans because I have one can and then another portion of a can that I had frozen in the freezer. I kept it pretty simple with the seasonings. I just added about a couple teaspoons of Italian seasoning, anti-nono seasoning, and sugar to mine because the chicken is already seasoned. And then it's just about layering it in your crock pot. You put a layer of the sauce on the bottom of the crock pot and then lay out the raviolis on top of that. And then I put my chicken on top of the raviolis and then I put a layer of cheese, a layer of sauce, and then I just repeated the process until I was out of ingredients. And that needs to cook on low in the crock pot for three to four hours. I'm actually starting mine out on high because I'm getting a late start and then I'll bump it down here in about an hour and a half. And I'll show you how it turns out. I helped the kids fix their plate and this is my plate and I cannot wait to dive in. I've already tasted this and it turned out so good. Adding that chicken, it just kicked up the flavor a notch. And if you want it to look more like an actual lasagna that you can slice into like perfect rectangles or squares, then I would recommend doing it the old fashioned way and making it in a casserole dish in the oven but I don't really care about that. I just cared about it being easy and delicious, and it definitely is. Just have another side salad here with some lettuce and cucumbers, a little ranch and cheese, and this is gonna be dinner tonight, and we're gonna have some leftovers for later on in the week. By the way, I did make another video about this topic several months ago with 20 meal ideas for when you're tired of cooking. And even though I made that video in the winter time, there are probably still some ideas in there that would work for summer. So I will be sure to leave that video linked in the description box for you below and you can go check it out after you're done watching this one. One of our neighbors brought us half a bushel of peaches. 
and I don't know if you're familiar or not, but half a bushel is a lot of peaches. <laughs> and we have been working on those. We've been eating them. We've been enjoying them. They've been really good, but I still have quite a few that I need to use up and I've been trying to think of some way that I can do that. And in perusing the internet, a lot of um, like really easy peach cobbler recipes, that was what I was looking for, involve canned peaches. Or there's like a peach cobbler dump cake and a peach cobbler in the crock pot, but they involve canned peaches and you kind of need to use those for the texture. But I did find one recipe that I wanted to try. It's from Six Sister Stuff and it does use fresh peaches and it uses a yellow cake mix. So the, I've got that easy factor and you can make it in the crock pot because I am not firing up the oven. It is already 91 with a high of 97 today. So definitely don't want to turn on the oven. So I'll show you how I'm doing that and I'll leave that recipe linked in the description box below as well. And we'll just test it out. I'll see if I can see if I can make that happen. The recipe calls for four cups of fresh peaches. I have no idea what four cups would look like. So I just peeled and sliced up what I had left. There were a few that I had to peel some bad spots off of. So it was probably about seven or eight peaches. And I'm going to toss those with three quarters of a cup of brown sugar and two teaspoons of cinnamon. And then I'm going to put them in the bottom of my slow cooker. And I will probably also use a slow cooker liner for this recipe as well. Then per the recipe instructions, I will sprinkle over the top of the peaches a box of yellow cake mix. I will take half a cup or one stick of butter. I'm gonna slice this up really thin and I'm going to put the slices on top of the cake mix and the instructions say to try to cover as much of the cake mix as possible. Then I'm going to start the slow cooker. I cannot remember what the cooking time is. I think it's low for three to four hours, but I will double check that and put it up here on the screen. And again, you can visit the recipe at Six Sisters Stuff. I will leave it linked in the description box below. If you remember earlier in the video, I actually combined some of the leftovers from the first night, a little bit of the chicken and a little bit of the rice that we had left over from that first meal. And I'm actually going going to use that tonight to create some really delicious, simple chicken wraps. Here's what I have gathered to make the chicken wraps for tonight. I am just going to use some plain flour tortillas. These are burrito size flour tortillas. I checked the grocery store a couple of different places in my Walmart for a different kind of wrap, like maybe a spinach and herb wrap, like a garden vegetable wrap or something like that, like one that has a flavor to it. But I couldn't find anything that I liked for this particular thing that I'm trying to pull together. But if you wanted to use a different kind of wrap, you absolutely could. This is my chicken mixture that I had left over from the first meal. So you'll remember that I stored some of it along with the leftover rice. I have some romaine hearts that I have washed up here. I'm not even going to bother chopping those because they're going to fit in the wraps just like they are. And I also really wanted some bacon for these wraps, but I really, really did not want to cook the bacon. So I'm cheating and I am using the fully cooked bacon that I can just pop into the microwave and then pop into these wraps. And I also have some Parmesan here that I'm going to grate. So all I will have to do is take a tortilla and put some of the chicken mixture on it, a few pieces of the lettuce, a few pieces of bacon, and then top it off with some freshly grated parm. Roll that all up and it will be ready to serve along with some fruit. I think I have a cantaloupe in the fridge that I can cut up and maybe some chips in the pantry and that will be dinner tonight. Would also be delicious with some fresh tomatoes thrown in, but I just don't have any on hand, so. If you have ever found yourself in a season where you just feel uninspired or unmotivated in the kitchen preparing meals for yourself or your family, I hope that you know now at the very least that you're not alone. I'm right there with you. It happens to me too. And I hope that I was able to give you some ideas. Feel free to give me and other people who are watching a few ideas in the comments. If you have some go-to easy meals for when you're tired of cooking. Thank you again to Green Chef for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check out that link in the description box as well. And pick out one of these videos to watch next. And I will see you there.